I've previously transmitted Respa just by recording a burst of Respa on a mobile phone and using its sound player to play it through an HF SSB transceiver. That works, but it's clunky. In particular, you've got to get the timing right. And as the Respa signal is pre-recorded, if you wanted to put in a different power level, a different location, or a different call sign, then you couldn't do it unless you'd already pre-recorded that variant beforehand. That's fine for casual experiments with RISPA, but if you want to do it a little bit more seriously, then it's better to get a dedicated mobile phone app. An example is the RISPA beacon for Android by IU4APC. Available for $2.90, you can download it and in a few minutes be on the air with RISPA. This is your main screen, you enter your call sign, You've got the option to use the GPS if you don't know your grid locator. Power level, you can select up to a kilowatt. You can select what band you want. It's got all bands up to two meters, not 70 centimeters, unfortunately. Your TX framing is how often you want to transmit. If you put it to two minutes, that means it's transmitting pretty much all the time because each whisper block is two minutes. Each whisper transmission is about 1 minute and 50 seconds. You wouldn't want to have it on all the time, so you'd normally set it so it might be every 8 or every 10 minutes, but you can set it as infrequently as every 200 minutes. One thing I should mention about the TX framing is that when you set it to 10 minutes, it's exactly every 10 minutes. There's no variation, it's not like the whisper light where when you set your transmit time that's only an average, there's a bit of variation. If you happen to have a case where you had one of these on the same frequency set up to every 10 minutes and then someone else down the road also had one of these set up to 10 minutes and on exactly the same frequency and you happen to press transmit at the same time, then there's a risk that both of you would be transmitting over the top of each other simultaneously for all your transmissions. So one or both of you may not be picked up by other stations. Whereas if you had something with a random variation, then that would remove that possibility. It's only a very minor thing. I don't think it's going to be a problem in practice. With the frequency, you've got a range of about 200 hertz. Down the bottom, you've got a tune button where if you press it, it just gives you a signal for tuning up. If you want to start transmitting Whisper, then you press the start button. There's a little pop-up that tells you where you set your frequency to. It's upper sideband and it's actually the frequency mentioned just up where the band is. When you press start, be patient. It won't start straight away. It's got to wait until when the next block starts. I'm transmitting Whisper phone speaker to transmit a microphone, but that's a bit crude, especially if there's extraneous noise. To access the phone's audio, the cheapest way is to get a mobile phone hands-free. You mainly need it for the 4-pin plug. Disconnect one of the earphones and connect it to whatever socket you want to go into the transmitter. In this case, I connected it to a homebrew double sideband transmitter and was able to transmit Whisper direct from the mobile phone. So far, all the features I've mentioned are independent of an internet connection, but if you are online and you've been transmitting some Whisper, you can press reports. The reports feature lists all reports from my call sign, even those where I haven't been using this app to send. I've been having the whisper light going and you can see there's some reports on 7 megahertz. 
but if we scroll down here I was on 10 megahertz using this app while portable at the beach and my signal's been picked up quite some distance away up to nearly 18,000 kilometers propagation both to Europe and the United States we'll now go to map now what happens with the map function is it goes straight to the WhisperNet website. So the same map that you see showing the lines joining your station with those that are receiving will come up on this map. This has been our look at the Whisper Beacon by IU4APC. I'm highly impressed and if you want to do Whisper a little bit more than once or twice, I'd highly recommend it. There's a link below or you can go to the Play Store and search on Whisper Beacon for Android and download it from there. If you want to get the most from Amateur Radio, check out books by Peter Parker, VK3YE. Titles include Minimum QRP, Hand Carried QRP Antennas, Getting Back Into Amateur Radio and 99 Things You Can Do With Amateur Radio. Visit vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon.